हेलो एवरी वन होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम अंजना फ्रॉम लर्नो हब द फ्री लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म मेक इन स्टडी मैथ साइंस एन एस एस टी एब्सोल्यूटली फ्री एट लर्नो हब डॉट कॉम इन टूडेज क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस आई सी सी क्लास टेन फिजिक्स चैप्टर फाइव रिफ्रैक्शन थ्रू अ लेंस विल बी स्टडिंग द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ इमेज बाई अ लेंस होप यू ऑल विल एंजॉय द सेशन आई यू रेडी लेट स्टार्ट rules of image formation by spherical lens we'll be studying three rules here we have the first rule a ray of light passing through the optic center of the lens emerges without any deviation after refraction so consider these figures here we have a convex lens and a concave lens in this convex lens we have an optic center so this is a optic center now we can see an incident ray of light this incident ray of light will follow undeviated which means the refracted ray and the incident ray will be along a same straight line it is not undergoing refraction we can see it will be following the same straight line okay what is the reason here if a ray of light it passes through the optic center it is undergoing no deviation we have studied a similar case when you have two mediums mu1 and mu2 okay the ray of light is incident normal okay this is your incident ray so when this incident ray comes normal to the plane to the surface where these two mediums meet then the ray will go undeviated okay it will go along the same straight path there is no refraction happening in this case same is the case here if a ray of light is incident to the optic center then the ray will follow undeviated okay this is for a convex lens same case for a concave lens here again this is a concave lens here we have the optic center o this is your incident ray incident ray is passing through the optic center it follows undeviation okay just not deviated it follows the same straight path Okay, incident ray and the refracted ray will be along the same straight line. Clear. The second rule: a ray emanating from the object parallel to the principal axis of the lens after refraction passes through the second principal focus f dash in a convex lens or appears to diverge in a concave lens from the first principal focus. So here, f dash or you can write it as f two. Okay, focus is f one. now you have a convex lens and a concave lens here you can see a ray of light which is incident parallel to the principal axis this is your principal axis here we have the principal focus f1 and f2 now when you have a parallel ray after the parallel ray strikes the lens what happens once it strikes the lens there is a change in medium refraction takes place that is from air to glass first refraction glass to air again the second refraction so this refraction takes place and the ray refracted ray will be passing through the focus okay f2 in this case a ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis after refraction passes through the principal focus same here but in this case we have a ray of light parallel to the principal axis after refraction appears to come from or appears to diverge from a point on the principal axis which is a principal focus of the concave lens okay so this is a case with the convex lens and this is concave lens in case of convex lens parallel light ray after refraction will converge to a point on the principal axis or move to a point on the principal axis which is the principal focus f2 here okay in case of concave lens a ray of light which is parallel once it strikes the lens after refraction appears to come from a point on the principal axis which is the principal focus in this case understood third point is just the opposite in the second point we have said that the ray of light is parallel here we have rays of light which are passing through the focus what happens after refraction a ray of light passing through the first principal focus of a convex lens emerges parallel to the principal axis after refraction so here we have the lens optic center now consider a ray of light this is your incident ray of light which is passing through the principal focus f1 okay after refraction what happens the ray of light will follow a path which is parallel to the principal axis 
in case of convex lens. When it comes to concave lens, here we have a ray of light which is pointing towards the principal focus. Okay, towards the focus it is pointing. Okay, it has a tendency to go to the principal focus. But what happens? Refraction, it undergoes refraction at this point and then follow a path which is parallel to the principal axis. Okay, clear? So this is your third rule. First rule, it is in the case the ray of light is passing through the optic center. Second, parallel rays of light and the third ray of light that is passing through the principal focus. Okay, now we'll be studying the image formed by the concave lenses and convex lenses in detail. Before that, you need to understand what are the nature of these images. So, the image form can be either a real image or a virtual image. It can be an erect image or inverted image. We'll understand what does these mean. Okay, first, there are two kinds of images. One is real image and the second is virtual image. What is a real image? If the rays from a point of an object after refraction through a lens actually meet at a point, the image is real. Okay, here we have a convex lens. Consider the case of a convex lens. These are parallel light rays. Okay, here somewhere at a distance we have an object. Light rays from the objects are incident on the convex lens. What happens? After refraction, they converge to a point on the principal axis. We know this point is focus. So here the image will be formed. At this point, image will be formed. Okay, the image formed in this case is a real image. Okay, how can you prove that this is a real image? For that, if you take a screen, okay, a white screen and place it here, then the image will be obtained there. Okay, the object's image will be diminished. That is, a small image will be formed at this point. Clear? So, when a screen, a white screen is placed at this point, the object's image can be obtained. Now, remember, the image formed will be a real image. Real because we can obtain it on a screen. Also, it will be inverted. Inverted means if this is how the object was. Here we have head and the base. Okay. Then the image formed will be inverted. This is how it will be. The head will rotate by 180 degrees. Okay. It will be rotating by 180 degrees. Upside down. This is how the image will look. So, real images will always be inverted. Clear? Now, what are virtual images? If the rays from a point of an object after refraction through a lens do not actually meet at a point, but they appear to diverge from a point, the image is virtual. That is the case of a concave lens. Okay, Here we have a concave lens. These are our parallel rays. Okay, Parallel rays, what is happening after refraction? They appear to diverge from a point. So, it is given that they appear to diverge. This is not a reality. Okay, here if you place a screen, you won't be able to get the image. Okay, then the image formed is a virtual image. Understood what a real image and a virtual image is? Virtual image. For example, when you look into a mirror, what you are seeing is your virtual image. Can you touch that image? Can you obtain it on a screen? No, right? So, the image formed in that case is a virtual image. Here again, we have we are using the virtual image. We get virtual image in case of concave lenses. We have discussed about real images and virtual images when we studied about the image formation in case of mirrors in the class 9th. You remember, right? The same thing. Real images can be obtained on screen and virtual images cannot be obtained on screen. And the virtual images will always be erect. Okay? Real images will be inverted. And the virtual images will be erect. Erect in the sense if the object is like this, then the image will also be there. Maybe change in size of the image, but the image will also stand upright. Okay, there is no inversion happening in this case. Understood what real images and virtual images are? So when you deal with these lenses, we'll be obtaining real images and virtual images. Let's see the cases in detail. This is very important. We have a distinction between real images and virtual images. Four points have been noted. The first point, a real image is formed due to actual intersection of the rays refracted by the lens. When you take the case of a convex lens, 
we are taking parallel light rays they converge at a point there is an actual intersection of the rays that are refracted these are the refracted ray and these refracted rays are meeting at a point therefore there is a real image formed now what is a virtual image a virtual image is formed when the rays refracted by the lens appear to meet if they are produced backwards we have seen the case of con cave lenses concave lenses when you have parallel light rays they appear to diverge from a point which means to obtain that image we have to extend these lines backward the refracted rays should be extended backwards okay. only then you will be getting the point where the image is formed and the image formed is just an illusion this is a virtual image second point a really real image can be obtained on screen okay so first it is based on the intersection of the rays here intersection is happening here it is not happening now second point is whether it is obtained on screen or not a real image can surely be obtained on a screen what about virtual image a virtual image cannot be obtained on a screen okay second point now the third point a real image is inverted we have said that real images will always be inverted if the object is like this then the image will be upside down okay a virtual image is erect with respect to the object if object is like this then the image will also be the same way okay next the image of a distant object formed by a convex lens as an example we can take in case of convex lens we are getting real images okay remember it is with distant object not nearby object not in the case of an object that is very close to the convex lens when you have distant object in that case the image formed by the convex lens will be real image okay and virtual images are always formed by concave lenses so four points important points you remember now okay so here remember related to screen we have a point whether inverted or erect images are found and the examples this case is with the convex lens and this case is with the concave lens now let us study the construction of ray diagram for a lens why do we construct ray diagram ray diagrams are used to study about the image how the image will be formed where the image will be formed what happens to the size of image the nature of image whether the image formed is a virtual image or a erect image we can predict all these by constructing ray diagrams in case of convex lens and concave lenses we will be constructing ray diagram first let's take the case of convex lens first step is to draw a straight line pq is the straight line this is your principal axis okay on the principal axis we have very different points optic center focus 1 focus 2 then center of curvature 1 second center of curvature all these should be marked so consider a point somewhere in the middle this is your optic center now draw a straight line which is perpendicular or normal to the principal axis passing through the optic center okay here using protractors you can draw the spherical surface of the lens the two spherical surface can be drawn clear now the next step is we have to mark f1 2f1 f2 and 2f2 let's take some measure this measure should be used always let's say some 2 centimeter or 3 centimeter can be taken in the ruler at 2 centimeter distance from the optic center mark a point this is your first focus first focus f1 now the same measure 2 centimeter will be marking the second point this is 2 f1 or c1 okay now similarly to the right side you will be having f2 at 2 centimeter don't change the measurement 2 centimeter distance you will be having f2 again 2 centimeter from f2 you will be having 2 f2 or c2 okay this distance between the focus and optic center is called the focal length distance between the center of curvature and the optic center is the radius of curvature now we need an object okay at any point draw a straight line with some measurement let's say again 2 centimeter measurement draw a straight line which is perpendicular to the principal axis mark an arrow at the top this is your arrow head okay now this is your object we have object a b of 2 centimeter okay now we read the rays the light rays the first light ray that we consider first light ray that we consider will be 
passing through the optic center. Okay, starting from A, passing through the optic center. This is your first light ray. Okay, mark the direction in which the light ray goes. Second is a light ray that is parallel to the principal axis. Let's see what happens after refraction. Okay, when it reaches here, refraction takes place and then the light ray will pass through the focus. So, this is how the light ray goes. Okay, it will pass through the focus. I'm drawing it freehand. When you take proper measurement and the scale, you will be getting correct images. So, this is it. Now, next light ray that is passing through the focus. Let's see what happens after refraction. Okay, after refraction, this light ray will be moving parallel to the principal axis. Will move parallel to the principal axis. So, this is the direction. You have to put arrow mark to show the direction. Okay, now all these three will meet at a point. Okay, this point is where the image is formed. Now, draw a straight line that is perpendicular from this point to the principal axis. Mark an arrow. So, this is the image which is formed. We can mark it as A dash B dash. So, A dash B dash is the image that is formed. Now, we can predict about the nature of the image, where the image is formed, how the image is formed, etc. Okay. This is a case of a convex lens. Next, let's take the case of a concave lens. Image formation in case or the ray diagram for a concave lens. First step, we'll take the principal axis, PQ. Same step, mark the optic center O. Draw a straight line, a normal which is passing through the optic center perpendicular to the principal axis. Using protractors, construct the spherical surfaces of the concave lens. Okay, now 2 cm measurement. Here to the left you will be having second focus and 2 F2. Here we will be having F1 and 2 F1. Okay, now we need the object. At any point, draw a straight line which is perpendicular to the principal axis. Put the arrow. Here we have the object. Mark it as AB. Okay. Now we need the light rays. So the first light ray that is passing through the optic center from the point A. Okay. This is your light ray. Direction of light ray. Okay. Next light ray that is parallel to the principal axis. A light ray that is parallel to the principal axis in case of a concave lens will appear to diverge from a point on the principal axis. We know this and this point is called the principal focus. Here we have the, this is how the light ray goes. It appears to diverge. We'll have to extend it backward. Okay. When you extend it backward, the light ray will appear to come from the focus F2. Okay. Now the third one, to get the third light ray, the light ray that is appearing to move towards the focus on the opposite side, towards F1. Okay, So here we have a ray that is towards the focus. What happens to this ray? This ray will then move parallel to the principal axis. So, just two rays are enough, one that is passing through the optic center and the second parallel to the principal axis that is appearing to diverge. So, when you take here the intersect, you will be getting the image. A diminished, a small image is formed which you can mark as A dash B dash. So, this is how the ray diagram can be constructed in case of a concave. In case of concave, both the object and image will be on the same side. We will be studying this in detail. Just showed you how to construct image in case of convex lens and concave lens. Let's see the image formation by convex lens. We are taking the case of convex lens first. Six image formation we'll be studying. That is, first the object is placed at infinity. From there, the object is being moved towards the lens. At different position, we are going to study how the images are formed. Okay, here we have a convex lens. The center of the convex lens, you will be having the optic center, optical center. Then this is your principal axis. Principal axis is a straight line which is drawn from the center of curvature which passes through the center of curvatures and optic center. Focus, everything will be lying on the same principal axis. We have the first focus, first principal focus point P F1 here and the second F2 here. 
टू एफ वन टू एफ वन इज नथिंग बट द सेंटर ऑफ कर्वेचर फर्स्ट सेंटर ऑफ कर्वेचर इट कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड एज सी वन और टू एफ वन देन वी हैव सी टू और टू एफ टू सेकेंड सेंटर ऑफ कर्वेचर वी नो द फोकल लेंथ द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन एफ वन एंड ऑप्टिक सेंटर ओ इज द फोकल लेंथ सेंटर ऑफ कर्वेचर to optic center the distance is radius of curvature radius of curvature will two be two times the focal length all these things we know so here we have an object which is at infinity okay so this light rays light rays from infinity of the distant object parallel light rays are taken these parallel light rays falls on the convex lens then what happens refraction takes place okay in case of convex lens they will converge at a point on the principal axis here they are converging at f2 okay so these parallel light rays are converging at f2 okay here we will be obtaining the image now how the image is formed we can say that image formed image formed in the first case that is when object is at infinity image is formed to the right side right of lens or we can see behind the lens okay. behind the lens or the opposite side of the object if the object is in the left side image is formed in the right side if object is in the right side then the image will be formed in the left side that is opposite side okay what else when you have an infinite object the object which is at infinity the size will be a big object right it will be a big object what is happening it is being reduced to a small point which means it is getting diminished we say the image is getting diminished it is reducing to a small size then next nature of the image or characteristics of the image is the image formed here will be a real image what is real image we have studied it can be obtained on a screen right so here if you place a white screen then you can get the image of the object it will be a point object real images are always inverted real and inverted so here it becomes upside down if the object is in this way image will be like this clear so this is used in order to burn a paper okay for example if you need to burn a paper if you have a con wax lens with you you can easily burn a paper what should be done during the afternoon time you have to focus sunlight sunlight is a sun is a distant object from sun the parallel rays which falls on this convex lens and you place a paper here somewhere it will be focused at a point okay if you can place a paper at the focus due to the heavy heat the heat that is being focused the op, the paper will start burning due to the heat that is obtained for the paper it starts burning so this is one application of object which is placed at infinity using convex lens how you can focus the light rays clear so this is your first position now the second position object at beyond 2f so here 2f we know is the center of curvature the object is placed just beyond just behind this 2f1 okay here we have the object object is taken as ab ab is your object okay now light rays from ab are falling on the convex lens here we are drawing a normal line that is from mn mn is your convex lens so this line will help us to focus the lights okay focus the rays so here from a we will be starting a parallel ray okay a ray which is parallel to the principal axis it is meeting the lens at point c what happens it will undergo refraction after refraction parallel light rays after refraction will move to the principal focus so here the second focus f2 the light ray will pass through f2 okay so here we have c a dash is your ray okay now the second ray second ray how is it it should pass it should start from a and pass through the optical center first light ray will be parallel to the principal axis after refraction should pass through the second focus and the second light ray is the one which is passing through the optical center so when you join these that is these two lines this refracted ray and the ray which is passing through the optical center will meet at a single point 
okay they will intersect at a point so here a dash is the point where these two rays intersect okay from the principal axis when you draw a normal to this okay here we'll be obtaining the image image formed we know will be an inverted image so we are marking a dash b dash okay a dash b dash is your image in this case image formed is a dash b dash of the object taken a b now what are the points that you can tell about this image formed where is the image formed first we have to say about the location where the image is formed image is formed between f2 and 2f2 2f2 or c2 second center of curvature and the second focus okay the image is formed between them now the nature or the characteristics of image it is sure that the image formed here is a real and inverted image why because it can be obtained on a screen it is formed to the right side or the opposite side in which the object is placed real image and inverted image okay now the size size of the image when taken a b will be greater okay a b will be greater than a dash b dash okay the image is diminished image is diminished in the previous case we are actually getting a highly diminished case, highly diminished image so the image was like a point object okay here we have a bitter size so this is the size a dash b dash but a dash b dash will be less than a b this is a diminished image so here we have the nature of the image formed in the second case when the object is moved forward that is initially the object was at infinity it is taken to a point which is just beyond 2f1 okay this finds application in case of camera lens okay in camera lens object far away objects can be focused the images can be taken in case of camera lens using this application of this convex lens when the object is just beyond 2f1 clear now the third position we started from infinity second was beyond 2f1 now when the object is at 2f1 okay at 2f1 let's see where the image is formed here we have the object object is ab ab is your object same as we discussed in the previous case first light ray that is parallel to the principal axis after refraction passes through the second focus f2 okay so here we have the first light ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction the refracted ray is passing through the second focus f2 now the second ray considered should pass through the optical center starting from a passing through the optical center we got the two rays okay now these two rays will intersect at a point that point is a dash a dash is the point now when you draw a perpendicular from this a dash to the principal axis you will be getting the required image okay here the image is a dash b dash image formed is a dash b dash where is the image formed here the object was placed at 2f1 the image is formed image is formed at 2f2 okay second center of curvature the image is formed okay what else what are the characteristics when you look at this it is clear that the size of object is equal to the size of the image height of object and height of image are same same size okay there is no change in size okay image is formed to the right side of the lens okay where object is in the left side and image is in the right side that is object is in the left and the image is formed on the opposite side okay image is formed on opposite side here the image formed will be a real image it can be obtained on screen okay. when you place a screen here this a dash b dash can be obtained first point then real images are always inverted real and inverted images formed what about the size size we said is of the same size it is not magnified or it is not diminished 
clear so this is your third point from infinity second point beyond 2f1 third point at 2f1 okay now what is happening to the image when the object was at infinity image was formed at f2 okay when object was taken to 2 beyond 2f1 what happened image is moving image was formed between f2 and 2f2 now when the object is placed at 2f1 image is formed at 2f2 when the object is moving forward moving towards the lens what is happening to the image image is moving away from the lens we'll discuss the other cases that is now when the object is placed between 2f1 and f1 at f1 between f1 and the optic center in all these cases let's see what is happening to the image next the fourth position of the object here when the object is placed between 2f1 and f1 between 2f1 and f1 let's see what is happening to the image here same case we have to take first light ray which is parallel to the principal axis a light ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction passes through the principal focus f2 so here we have the light ray passing through the principal focus f2 okay now the second one passing through the optic center starting from a passing through the optic center they these two rays will be meeting at a point which is a dash a normal drawn to the principal axis we get a dash b dash so the image is a dash b dash okay where is the image formed where is the image formed here we have 2 f2 and the image is formed beyond 2 f2 image is formed beyond 2 f2 okay then what else what are the other characteristics when you see this it is clear that here this is a b this is the object when you take a dash b dash a dash b dash is longer or taller yes so the height of the image has increased which means the image is enlarged or you can say it is magnified enlarged or magnified okay here a b this is your a b a b is getting inverted a dash b dash so we have a real and inverted image formed real and inverted when a screen is placed at this point you will be getting at this position when your screen is placed you can get a clear image of the object which is enlarged and inverted okay now where is the application of this so this is used in the case of slide projectors okay in slide projectors this is how it is used you are using a convex lens and the object consider will be at a point between f1 and 2f1 clear now the fifth position when the object is at f1 first focus okay the object is placed at the first focus we started from infinity then beyond 2f1 at 2f1 between 2f1 and f1 and now the position is at f1 okay here we have the object a b at f1 where is the image formed let's see here we'll be taking the parallel light rays first from A, we have a parallel light ray to the principal axis. After refraction, it is passing through the second focus, F2. Okay. Now, the second light ray passing through the optical center. Are they meeting at any point? Are they intersecting? No. These lines are parallel lines. Parallel lines. They don't intersect at any point. And these lines will be going to infinity. Okay. They are going to infinity, which means that in this case, the image will be formed at infinity. Image is formed at infinity. Okay. We studied that when the object was at infinity, image is formed at the focus. Here object is at the focus and the image will be formed at infinity. What about the size? At infinity, the image formed will be highly enlarged. Okay. You will be getting a highly enlarged image. Okay. As usual, the image will be a real image. Also, it will be an inverted image. A dash B dash. A dash B dash will be having a size which is very, very greater than AB. Okay. A dash B dash is very, very greater than AB. Clear? So, this is your fifth position. And it finds application in case of the collimeter. 
of spectrometer. In spectrometer, we have a collimeter where this is being used. The object will be placed at the focus of the lens and the image will be formed at an infinity. Okay? And a highly enlarged image can be obtained then. Next, the final position that is the object is placed between optic center and the first focal point. First focus, okay, between optic center and the first focus point. Here we have the object AB. Of AB is placed between O and F1. First light ray that is parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus, second focus F2. Okay. Second light ray which is passing through the optic center. Here we have the second light ray. Okay. Neither does it intersect nor they are parallel lines. If they are parallel lines, you can say that the image will be obtained at infinity. If they intersect somewhere here to the right of the lens, the image will be formed. In this case, they are not parallel lines nor they are intersecting. So, in the case, what we do is we extend it backward. Okay. This light ray which is passing through the second focus and the light ray passing through the optic center is extended backward. So, here you can see the ray extended backward. The ray passing through the optic center is extended backward. Then they will be intersecting at a point. So, A dash is a point where these two rays which are extended backward meets. Okay. From there, when you draw a normal to the principal axis, you will be getting the image A dash B dash. Okay. When you check this image, what can you say about the characteristics? We can say that the image is formed on the same side. Image is formed on the same side of the object. Okay. Next, the second point, when you check the size, AB is small compared to A dash B dash. So, what has happened? The image formed is an enlarged image or it is magnified enlarged or magnified okay so here we have ab and this is a dash b dash which means the image formed is an erect image erect image as well as they will be virtual images virtual images will just remember when you look at a mirror you will be feeling that there is an image formed your image is formed there you know you are not able to touch it or you are not able to obtain it on a screen. So, these types of images are virtual images. Here in this case, when a screen is placed, screen placing the screen is also not possible. So, when screen is placed also, we cannot obtain the image. So, A dash B dash formed is a virtual image. Clear? So, in case of convex lens, we have studied six ray diagrams for the image formation only in this case. That is a final case when the object is between optic center and the first focal point, we are getting an image that is erect and virtual. In all other cases, we are getting real and inverted images which is on the opposite side in which the object is placed. So, in the final case, in the last case only, we are obtaining an image that is formed on the same side which is an erect image and a virtual image. Clear? So, in case of convex lens, we can say that both real and inverted images as well as virtual and erect images are formed. Okay, so that's it with convex lenses. Let us once more check all the six ray diagrams. So here first object at infinity, then object beyond 2F1, object at 2F1, object between F1 and 2F1, object at F1 and object between O and F1. That is the object distance is less than focal length. What is happening? When the object is moving forward, what is happening to the image? Image is moving backward. Consider only these five cases. One, two, three, four, five. Not the fifth case. Fifth case is entirely different because in all the other five cases, we are getting an image which is a real and inverted image formed on the opposite side in which object is placed. If object is placed in the light, left side, then the image is formed on the right side. If object was placed on the right side, then the image will be formed on the left side of the lens. But when it comes to the final case, last case, when the object is placed between O and F1, only in this case, we are getting an image that is on the same side. So, you cannot consider this case. Okay. Here, just remember these. When the object was at infinity, we got the image formed at focus. 
Okay. Now, this is just the opposite of the first case. Object is at focus and image is formed at infinity. Check the second and fourth one. Second case and fourth case. Where is the object placed? Object is placed beyond 2F1 and image is formed between F2 and 2F2. Between the focus and center of curvature, image is formed when the object is placed beyond 2F. Okay. Now, just the opposite case. Here we have just the opposite case in the fourth one. Here, object is placed between the focus and center of curvature and the image is formed beyond the 2F2. Beyond 2F2. Okay. Now, the third case. Third case, we have the object placed at center of curvature or 2F1 and image is also formed at the same thing but on the opposite side okay so when you take the distance object distance and the image distance will be same in this case similarly the size of the object and the size of image will be same clear so here we have a table which shows the characteristics and location of image for a convex lens this table is very very important you will be asked to draw this table in which the different positions of object, the image formed positions, the size of image and the nature of image is all tabulated in a single table. Okay, here just we'll go through this table first when the position of object is at infinity. When object is at infinity, where is the image formed? Image is formed at 2F2. Okay, it is a highly diminished image. So if you are asked in the question, where do we get a highly diminished image? image. When do we get a highly diminished image? When a convex lens is used. When the object is at infinity. Okay. This type of questions can come. So, here the image form will be a real and inverted image. Just remember in all the five cases you will be getting real and inverted except the final case. Okay. Only in the final case we are getting a virtual and direct image. All other five cases we will be getting the nature of image will be real and inverted. Okay. When the object is beyond 2F1, image is formed between F2 and 2F2 and the image formed is a diminished image. Okay. This is highly diminished. Now it is diminished. Clear? So here let's say it is a point sized object. Here it is somewhat diminished if this is your object. Okay. Object is same. Here it is diminished. Now when the object is at 2F1, image is formed at 2F2 it will be of the same size, real and inverted. So, if this is your object, image will be just like the same size, but just inverted. Okay. Between F1 and 2F1, the image is formed beyond 2F2 and the image formed is magnified or enlarged. If this is your object, image will be of more size. Okay, it will be an enlarged image which is inverted, real or inverted image is formed at 2 or F1. If the object is at 2 F1, then the image will be formed at infinity. At infinity, at 2 F2, at F1, at infinity. Okay, here the image formed is highly enlarged or highly magnified. Okay, if this is your object, a highly magnified image will be obtained. This image is also real and inverted. Now the final and the different case which is when the object is placed between the lens and the focus point F1. Okay. In that case, on same side behind the object, on behind the object, we will be getting the image. Then the image will be magnified. Enlarged image will be formed and the image will be virtual and upright or virtual and erect image will be formed. Okay, here we are not mentioning any position that is between F2 and 2F2 or between F1 and 2F1. Why? Because the image, it depends upon the point where the object is placed between lens and F1. Okay, depending on that there will be change. Only thing to remember is it will be on the same side and it will be found behind the, behind the object okay behind the object it will be formed it can either be at f1 it can be between f1 and 2f1 it can be beyond 2f1 at 2f1 or at infinity any case it can be formed clear now let's see the image formation of concave lens we have studied the image formation and the ray diagram in case of convex lens we had six position here we have only two position one is at infinity when the object is at infinity and the second is anywhere between infinity and the optical center okay here when the object is at infinity let's see where the image will be formed we have 
the parallel light rays parallel light rays when it strikes the concave lens it appears to diverge from a point we know it appears to diverge from a point on the principal axis here it appears to diverge from the focus second focus f2 okay so at f2 we will be able to obtain the image so here image will be formed okay so this is where the image is formed now let's see what are the nature of image formed we had a enlarged object here we have an image which is very point sized which means the image is highly diminished okay highly diminished then the image is formed on the same side in which the object is also placed okay object and image are on the same side the image formed will be a virtual image it is erect or upright virtual image erect and upright okay so these are the characteristics of the image formed and the image will be formed at f2 okay the image will be formed at the second focus of the concave lens next when the object is between optic center and infinity it can be at any point can be beyond 2f2 at 2f2 between 2f2 and f2 at f2 or it can be between f2 and the optic center at any point when the object is placed let's see where the image is formed first light ray that is parallel to the principal axis after refraction appears to diverge from a point on the principal axis here the point is the second focus f2 okay here you can see this is your light ray incident light ray after refraction this is how the light ray goes okay when it is extended backward when extended backward it will be pointing towards the second focus okay now the second light ray is towards the optic center the one that is passing through the optic center this is your second light ray now the second light ray and the first light ray that is extended the refracted ray extended backward will be meeting at a point so this is a point where we'll be marking a dash from there draw a perpendicular to the principal axis you will be getting the image a dash b dash is the image that is formed okay now what is the nature of image here this is a b and this is a dash b dash the height of a b is greater than a dash b dash which means the image formed is diminished in this case a small image is formed it is diminished okay it is as same as the object okay object here it is erect erect image or upright image is formed virtual and erect virtual and erect also it is formed on the same side of the object okay same side of the lens object is at the left hand side of the lens and image is also on the left hand side of the lens clear it is formed on the same side so got the characteristics of the image that is formed in case of concave lens only we have two ray diagrams in this case so here this first case that is when the object is at infinity it is being used in the case of galilean telescope the application is in case of galilean telescope okay and the second part this is being used in case of the lens which is made for children who have myopia or short sightedness okay in that case the concave lens concave lens is used for students who or children who are having myopic eye or short sightedness in that case we will be using concave lens and this concave lens here the object will at any position can be focused that is a diminished image can be formed on the retina for that purpose it can be that is we can adjust the position of the image formed it can be bought on the retina clear we have studied about the myopic eye and the hypermetropic eye and all so this myopic eye case we can use a concave lens so here we have a table which shows the characteristics and location of images which are formed by a concave lens so first position when the object is at infinity position of object is at infinity we have an image that is formed at the focus on the same side of the lens as the object 
then the size of the image image anyways it will be diminished okay in case of concave lenses you can remember this point never we will be getting real and inverted images nor enlarged images cannot be obtained okay always the images will be diminished so in this case that is when the object is at infinity you will be getting a highly diminished image and it will be virtual and upright or virtual and erect okay now the second case when the object is between any point any point between infinity and optical center in that case image will be formed between the focus and optical center okay between focus and optical center on the same side always on the same side will be getting images here it is not highly diminished but still it is a diminished image it will also be virtual and erect okay remember in case of convex lens we are getting real and inverted as well as virtual and erect only in the final case we are getting virtual and erect but when it comes to the case of concave lens you will always be getting only virtual and erect images and they will always be diminished in case of convex you are getting highly diminished highly enlarged diminished enlarged and images that are of the same size clear now what are the important difference between the images that are formed by a convex lens and concave lens study this table we have three important points first one the image can be real as well as virtual as we said in case of convex lens real images and virtual images can be obtained what about convex the image is always virtual for all the position of the object at what position the object is placed doesn't matter image formed will surely be a virtual image now the second point the image can be magnified of the same size as well as diminished okay we can get enlarged or magnified images we can get images that are of same size when object is placed at the center of curvature image is also formed at the center of curvature on the opposite side it will be of the same size and also will be obtaining diminished images okay when it comes to concave lens you will always be getting only diminished images next third point the image can be inverted as well as erect we are getting real and virtual images as well as inverted and erect images when it comes to a concave lens the image will always be erect images virtual images are always erect so these are the important differences between the image formed by a convex lens and image formed by a concave lens that's all for today in today's class we have discussed how to construct ray diagram we have studied the image formation in case of convex lens and concave lens hope you all enjoyed the session i'll be back in the next session until then stay tuned to learn how learn how free hai par best hai thank you